for mom and dad together forever, love story. Oh, <laughs> oh and one's black and one's white, like me and you. <laughs> oh my god! Bravo, Leonardo da Vinci. Beautiful child with positive energy. <laughs> and pulled it. Oh god. She loves ruining a story, this one. I was getting right into it then. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Baba. <laughs> I'm Elise, this is Lawrence, and this is our baby night. We're traveling the world. But we're going to be doing things a bit differently. We're going to be traveling a month. And coming back to the UK and working a month. We're going to be traveling month on, month off. Until this little one goes to school in a couple of years. We want to see if it's actually possible to travel the world with a toddler in tow. So subscribe and come along for the journey. Good morning. We are on the way to Ravin. We've just come from Pula, which was possibly one of my favorite places in the whole world. If you haven't seen that, go and have a look. But apparently, this next place is supposed to be even more beautiful. I'm really excited. We've got 19 minutes till we get there. Now we should say about the parking, we have just waited for half an hour to get in a car park. So if you are driving, keep that in mind. Or, as Lawrence has just said, get here earlier. We made it, we're here. We are in, I mean, I'm double excited about this place. Yeah. This is supposed to be the most beautiful place in Eastria. <sighs> there's a lot to unpack. I'm gonna try not to waffle on, but I'm excited. Oh look, there's a, they're from Britain. Oh look, Brett. the Queen Eleganza. How do you know they're from Britain? Oh yeah, <laughs> British flat. You know you've made it in life when you've got a treadmill on the sun deck of your yacht. So Ravin was home to the Romans and after the Venetians ruled it for 500 years, they basically expanded the town into mainland. So Ravin was actually an island. And what they'd done is they filled the channel with the earth to create a bigger town, which is why now the old town looks like it's on a peninsula. It was actually an island. So one thing to know about here is it is full of tourists because everybody wants to see the absolute beauty of this place, which is understandable. But when we went to Pula yesterday, it was like a little bit more undiscovered. There wasn't a lot of people there at all. So this has got all the charm, but more of the tourists. The church bell tower at the top, you'll see the statue. It basically shows you which direction the wind's blowing. So whichever way the hand is facing, that's what way the wind is blowing. See the fish now, guys. The water's so clear. You see the shark. 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 Nana, how many fish did we see? Fish. Show Daddy. Say two. Fish. And how many sharks? Big shark. Big shark. Big shark. Fish. How many fish, Baba? You could also tell the Roman influence just by how the squares and the streets are laid out very very symmetrical and that would have been back when the uh, the Romans had their military bases here so after the Venetian rule Ravin was actually ruled by the Austrians for a hundred years and they built this clock tower. After the collapse of the Austrian Empire uh, after the First World War, Ravin actually became part of Italy until the Second World War. After the Venetians ruled Ravin for 500 years, it obviously had such a big impact on the area. You'll see dotted about the, uh, the symbol of the Venetian Republic. It's a lion with wings holding a book. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Baba. <laughs> nice. Yeah. When in Rome or Croatia, we're um, having some Italian food. It's lovely. And we've also discovered that the Croatian wine 
is glorious. What you got? Fish. Got salmon tagliatelle. Looks stunning. Say thank you very much. You might. Upside down. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the in the That's clever, man. I, mean, you've got nine. I love that there is washing out everywhere. I know it sounds silly, but I just love that aesthetic. Like the old buildings and the washing out. And Lawrence was saying it makes a good point that there's so many tourists here, but it's still very much lived in. Like the fact that there's washing on the line means that it's still like an active town that people live in, which is nice. This here is the island of St. Nicola and it's basically home of the luxury resorts with natural hero styling. <laughs> how old is he? He's, how old are you, Nye? Uh, no, how old are you? No, what's your name? Nye. And how old are you? Two. Wow, very, very smart for two. For mom and dad together forever, love story, oh. for little hearts, <laughs> for all the best. Oh, I'm one's black and one's white, like <laughs> yin yang. Yin <laughs> yang, positive energy balance, <laughs> best combination. <laughs> and you like in Croatia, it's beautiful? It's beautiful. Stunning. Amazing. A lot of English tourists. But in July, August, more. Oh, really? Yes, now <laughs> Germans, they have a holiday. Oh my god! Bravo, Leonardo da Vinci. Oh my goodness! First silhouette shadow image for beautiful child with positive energy. <laughs> Bravo. Have you ever been to one of these places and somebody's made something and you've said no? I feel like you can't do that, can you? I mean, is that a thing? Can you say no? Yes, Baba. because he heard me say that the floor was slippy. <laughs> so little glass cloud nine is doing this. Come on. Come on. Just for reference, if you do come here, the floor is very slippy, so have some shoes that have got some grip. Okay, so there is a local legend about the church at the top of the hill. There's quite a, some would say it's a miracle, of how the sarcophagus got to the church. How do you know about this story then, history buff? There's a vast amount of knowledge between these beautiful, cute, lobeless ears. <laughs> and curls. Has anyone actually got lobeless ears that are, that's watching this? How common is it that? My ear doesn't have a lobe. Alien. If you are one of a kind, comment. Okay, so two fishermen were out at sea. A storm kicked up. And then what happened was the, the two fishermen were literally on their knees praying their last prayer because they thought that was going to be their last trip. They 
woke up on the shore of Ravin and they looked outside the boat and there was a bright light shining on this object in the water and then the object sank. So they went into the town, gathered loads of people to try and get this object from underneath the sea, they couldn't do it. Anyway, an old lady with an oxen came by. They tied the object to the oxen. The oxen pulled it out of the sea and How pulled it. Oh God, she loves ruining a story, <laughs> this one. I was getting right into it then. The oxen pulled it out. The oxen pulled it out, up the hill. And everyone was saying how much of a miracle it was that these fishermen survived the one of the worst storms of the century. A skeptic was struck unconscious and he came to and he said that he had a vision while he was unconscious that Saint Euphemia's bones were in this sarcophagus. And they were. So they named the hill, the Hill of Euphemia and that's where it got its name. Do you wow. like the name Euphemia? Yeah. It sounds like a venereal disease. That's the local folklore, folks. And I'm walking in the middle of a roundabout, yeah. so I'm going to get out the road. carried away with this. We're going to on the M25 here. <laughs> right, so I need a chocolate ice cream, really. It's a bit unnecessarily lifelike, isn't it? <laughs> Do you reckon someone takes that home with <laughs> What do you think her name is? Euphemia, probably. <laughs> mm. Obviously went for chocolate and white Nutella. What would you have gone for? Are you a chocolate or a fruit person? 